art that changes the physical appearance of the environment where it enhances the settings of physical structures. It is one of the decorative arts connected to architecture, city planning, and horticulture. It is an art, science, and nature. It is an art as it creates experiences that uplift the spirits, expand vision, and revitalizes lives. It is a science as it develops precise knowledge of its processes and materials. It is directly related to and expressive of nature as it integrates natural materials and scenes. In Europe, beyond the limits of the Islamic conquest, the destruction of civilized society by the barbarian tribes had been nearly complete, but the physical remains of the past shaped the reviving future. The peristyle gardens of Roman villas became the cloisters of Christian basilicas. Italian garden landscapes were portrayals which cultivated the arts of a civilized life. The variation in style among Italian gardens is considered and is due to not only the date they were made, the exigency of the site, and regional variation but also their social function. The first garden coordinated with a dwelling appeared at the Chateau of Annette, where despite its evident sophistication remained an inward-looking, essentially medieval garden. There, the moat that formerly surrounded French castles became an ornamental body of water on one side and a decorative canal on the other. Grandeur on the scale that competitive pride demanded was achieved by extraordinary extension. England was committed to a version of the French geometric extension garden but with an emphasis on English grass lawns and gravel walks. In the 18th century England, people became increasingly aware of the natural world rather than imposing their man-made geometric order on the natural world, they began to adjust to it. Trees, for example, could assume their natural forms and a large expanse of water was redesigned into two irregular shaped lakes. A sense of history still played a part in 20th century gardening. The desire to maintain and reproduce old gardens, such as the reconstruction of the 16th century gardens of Bilandry in France and the colonial gardens of Williamsburg in the United States, was not particularly modern but as humans increasingly need the reassurance of the past, the impulse may continue. Attempts to create a distinctive modern idiom are rare. Modern public gardens, which have evolved from large private gardens of the past, seek instant popular applause for the quantity and brightness of their flowers. Gardens frequently reflect Japanese influence particularly in America. The sky, mountains, seas, rivers, and rocks were thought to be the materialization of spirits who were regarded as fellow inhabitants in a crowded world. The kind of landscape that appealed was generally of a balanced sort, for the Chinese had discovered the principle of complementary forms of male and female, of upright and recumbent, rough and smooth, mountain and plain, rocks and water, from which the classic harmonies were created. Chinese culture permeated East Asia and, by way of Korea, infiltrated Japan. The typical early Japanese garden lay to the south of the dwelling and consisted of a narrow pond or lake oriented through its longer axis and contained an island. At the north end of the pond was an artificial hill 
for which a secondary stream descended in a cascade. Variation entered only through the individual particularities of the site and the detailed handling of stones and trees. The scaling down of landscapes to the garden size was logically continued to the point where miniature gardens were made in trays as small as a foot square containing lakes, streams, islands, hills, bridges, garden houses, and real trees, painstakingly cultivated to an appropriate scale. The Japanese fondness for systematization led them to classify gardens based on treatment and subject. Three standard treatments were recognized, the elaborate, moderate, and the modest. Landscape architecture complements any edifice. It adds color and life to what may seem drab or nondescript. And no one knows this better than I.P. Santos, the father of Philippine landscape architecture. Ildefonso P. Santos Jr. was an architect by education, an artist in his passion, and a landscape architect by profession. His landscapes were linear or architectural, with abundant use of concrete. But these were softened by a mix of patterns, textures, and materials obtained the malamig sa mata effect. The integration of local art pieces to his landscape was essential, an expression of culture as he would say. The use of mass plantings in his softscapes was his trademark, creating a visual feast of colors and textures. Some of his notable landscapes are in CCP Complex, Bantayag ng Makabayani, Manila Hotel, Burnham Park, Paco Park, and Nayong Pilipino. There are two categories of landscaping, softscaping and hardscaping. Hardscaping is the hard stuff in your yard, concrete, bricks, and stone. Softscape is the soft growing stuff like perennial flowers, shrubs, succulents, and trees. Softscape is living, hardscape is not. Landscape designers work on a canvas that is distinctly different from other art forms. The art is always changing as the plants grow, environmental conditions change, and people use the space. For this reason, landscape designers use a design process that systematically considers all aspects of the land, the environment, the growing plants, and the needs of the user to ensure a visually pleasing, functional, and ecologically healthy design. Lines in the landscapes are created by the edge between two materials, the outline or silhouette of a form, or a long linear feature. They are powerful tools for the designer because they can be used to create an infinite variety of shapes and forms, and they control movement of the eyes and the body. Form is found in both hardscape and plants, and it is typically the dominant visual element that spatially organizes the landscape and often determines the style of the garden. The form of structures, plant beds, and garden ornaments also determines the overall form. Texture refers to how coarse or fine the surface of the plant or hardscape materials feel and or looks. Texture is used to provide variety, interest, and contrast. Color is the most conspicuous element in the landscape and is usually the focus of most homeowners. However, it is also the most temporary element, usually lasting only a few weeks, a year for individual plants. The use of color is guided by color theory, use of the color wheel to create color schemes. Relative proportion is the size of an object in relation to other objects. Absolute proportion is the scale or size of an object. An important absolute scale in design is the human scale because the size of other objects is considered relative to humans. Plant material, 
garden structures, and ornaments should be considered relative to human scale. Other important relative proportions include the size of the house, yard, and the area to be planted. Order generally refers to the spatial layout or organization of the design and is often achieved through balance. Balance is the concept of equal visual attraction and weight, usually around a real or imaginary central axis. Form, color, size, and texture all affect balance. Balance can be symmetrical, asymmetrical, or perspective. Order can also be achieved by massing features or elements into distinct groups and arrange them around a central point. Repetition is created by the repeated use of elements or features to create patterns or a sequence in the landscape. Repeating line, form, color, and texture creates rhythm in the landscape. Repetition must be used with care. Too much repetition can create monotony, and too little can create confusion. Simple repetition is the use of the same object in a line or the grouping of a geometric form, such as a square in an organized pattern. Unity is achieved by linking elements and features to create a consistent character in the composition. Unity is sometimes referred to as harmony, the concept of everything fitting together. By comparison, scattered groupings of plants and unrelated garden ornaments are the opposite of unity. Una engineering student ako katulad ni Edward Perez. Then we realized bata pa kami noon, nag-drop out kami sa engineering. We didn't see in our time that it would help us. Right? Edward became a writer. I became I went to landscape architecture in Diliman. And I found out I I love plants. Bata pa ako naglalaro na ako ng buhangin eh. Lalagyan ko ng tubig, may traktor ako ng maliit, bubutasin namin yung buhangin. Um, then maghuhulma ulit kami ng putik. Yun pala yun, you do landforms and then you create that space that will be functional for people to utilize. So, kasama yun sa uh, hobby, if you call it. For some, it's a hobby. For, some, for, for me, it's a profession. And it is now regulated by the Republic Act 1953. Uh, which regulates the um, profession of landscape architecture. So, do na ko napunta through the years. Ang isang primary serve, um, ano nito, purpose ng landscaping is to create a space for the enjoyment of humans. At saka yung ating history, ma-recognize din through the physical uh, preservation Landscaping is for health and well-being of people. To, to recap, may heritage value, may narratives, may, may national pride, may sense of identity, may healing, at saka merong enjoyment. You can enjoy only if you're healthy. And it's very important right now that you are healthy. Yun lang yun eh. Pagka healthy tayo, yun na yung kayamanan natin. Ang dami akong idols. That's why I'm hanga ang ko. Si Burl Marx, si I.P. Santos. I've never worked under him, but I've seen his work and I have talked with him. It's like, um, parang yan ang ano eh, yan ang guru ng landscape architecture sa Philippines. He's known as the father of landscape architecture. Si Dolly Perez, of course, uh, architect siya, tsaka interior designer and landscape architect rolled in one. Si Salvador Bautista, he's a landscape architect. He's a graduate of uh, horticulture. He, he inspires me kasi magaling siya mag-critic. Hindi ka pwedeng, akala mo lang, uh, very ano yung style niya, pero maya maya kinikriticize ka niya, kaya up on my toes ka palagi. Ang isa pa, ang idol ko ay si Jane Goodall. Asoologist din siya. Ganun. Tapos, um, yung, yung, yung kasing attitude niya, hindi lang siya tungkol sa animals, eh, mahilig din siya sa halaman. And then si Ian McHarg, uh, the father of uh, GIS, the Graphic Information System. 
Paolo Alcazarin is one of my idols. Pero buhay pa yan siya. I miss him. <laughs> Mas matanda sa akin, pero ang galing-galing niya. He's a writer and also a landscape architect and a planner. You know, role in man. Tapos magaling mag-sketch. Landscaping is like marriage. Pinakamadali yung mag-design, pinakamadali yung mag-implement, ang pinakamahirap yung i-maintain. Ang message ko is, when you design something, you should have maintenance in mind. And when you have maintenance in mind, you have sustainability. How will it be sustainable to the owner, kung siya ba ay may kaya na mag-maintain, to the public uh, servant, or to the one who wants it to be, eh, bawa, nasa public space. Kaya ba niya i-maintain yung, yung kalat? Meron ba siya capability na gano'n? I-review mo yan, i-assess mo. Anong equipment meron siya? Anong skills ng tao niya? Anong age na ng mga tao niya para mag-maintain? Kasama yun sa pagpaplano. So, yun. Native species, sustainable landscapes, and then uh, purpose for the people, para sa tao. Health and well-being. Siguro yun yung mga leksyon. Magbasa, magmasid, handang matuto, magpapkumbaba. At i-offer niya nila na mga batang ito ang kanilang work sa higher being. I think that's my message for them. Magbasa, handang matuto, magiging mapagkumbaba. Humility is very important. Kasi hindi ka matututo pag hindi ka humble. Parang niyabang mo na alam ko na lahat. Pero pag alam mo na na hindi mo alam lahat, at marami ka matutunan bukas ang isip mo, bukas ang puso mo, doon ka matututo. Materials required Square cardboard box Plastic lining or packing tape Soil, sand, rocks or pebbles Colored paper Scissors, paste or glue or tape Barbecue sticks or wires, pencil and markers, other available materials that can be used in the design. Instructions Cut the top of the box to make a 3-inch high box. Secure the bottom of the square card box with the packing tape to strengthen the base. Line the inside of the box with plastic lining. Put the soil and sand in the box. You now have a miniature land area to landscape. Imagine how you would like to landscape this piece of land. Use the pebbles and rocks to create bodies of water and other hardscapes. Cut out the colored papers to make some softscapes like trees, plants, flowers, etc. Attach the cut colored papers to the skewers or barbecue sticks. Stick the cut colored papers to the soil depending on your design. Add decorative details where needed. You can use sawdust sprayed with paint to make grass and water. After designing your land, take a picture and show it to your teacher. Are you happy with your miniature landscape? You all did a great job. You can now explore other materials and design to make more miniature landscapes. But in the future, I hope you will all design a real life-size garden.